ओम शांति सो वेलकम एवरीवन This is so special that we have Brother Harsha here with us all the way from Hyderabad, India. So I'm going to um, just spotlight him and how are you? <laughs> you might want to unmute yourself there. Uh, Shanti. Om Shanti. so you're up bright and early you yeah they they just finished another program so more and more people will be coming wow yeah back to <laughs> yeah back to back i just went from one room to the next room but anyway good to see you leia and balraj good to see tim and geeta is that really debra and jim oh wow that's great and carolyn Okay. So I'm going to just do an official welcome uh with Brother Harsha. You all know him. I mean, he's your near and dear wonderful brother and we can't wait for you to get back. And he just took off his video and muted himself. <laughs> I'll wait till he comes back on. Okay. All set? Okay. So you know Harsha, he's been in this knowledge since 2000 or 2004 when the Anubhuti Meditation and Retreat Center began. So he made us feel that we had good footing because he's been such an instrumental soul, full steam ahead. That's his motto and it's just opened up his intellect in such a way and his heart his whole family comes from a very uh devotional background uh from the vedantic tradition and of course harsha has been educated in it and so what a lovely combination heart and head and who better than to talk about the balance of um humility and self respect and tonight's title is humility and ego so brother harsha welcome om shanti thank you sister elizabeth it's nice to meet every one of you <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a pleasure to be part of the gathering uh good to see familiar faces and uh, yeah this is one of the interesting topic uh, which i always wanted to uh, keep me on my toes especially humility and uh, ego for me um, i had a um, uh, in hindi the word sounds little different uh, somehow i had this uh, association you know like every word has an association to some set of feeling like uh, some idea or certain set of feelings and one of the feeling that i had with humility is like somebody who is you know in a, if you look show india and then somebody is bowing down and uh, right uh, and the same image is also connected to somebody who is subservient <laughs> you know so i had a mixed feelings for this word humility so i was uh, trying to chant a little bit more on uh, uh, what actually is humble or humility where does it come from um, the word that is used in hindi is nirman right nirman like and then the word that is used for ego is abhiman right and both has this man right the sense of self right is uh, associated with it nirman and abhiman and uh, uh, as i was going through this feeling like oh if i don't know who i am uh, if i know who i am is that supposed to be ego 
if I know that I'm good at this part and then I project that attribute of my side, is that a ego? And uh, there is a lot of confusion between these two words. These are very complicated words for me. <laughs> so, um, so that is where uh, um, I was churning a little bit more and especially after coming to Brahma Kumaris, uh, uh, Baba gives a lot of clarity into this part. And one of the things uh, um, uh, that really helps me um, is uh, um, following through, uh, not just listening to, to how, uh, how to relate to this uh, complicated words like ego and humbleness and how to interpret it in the right context. So I just want to give a little background around uh, um, uh, this uh, whole uh, journey of uh, language because uh, we get uh, stuck in the words. Anyone had that problem? We get lost in the words, we get uh, confused by using words, <laughs> you know? Sometimes if you don't use words, just stick around, a lot of things get sorted out by itself, right? So, and especially when, it, when, when I'm talking about that particular concept of going beyond words, one of the thing is um, when we are around, uh, especially coming from India, in India, when, when our parents are there at home, how do you feel, right? You feel at ease. You feel somebody's out there looking after you, right? Uh, I, I'm not just talking about when you're young, especially when you're young, a child will know when the mom is not around, right? So in the same way, when, uh, when we have uh, our, even though when we are grown up, right? Uh, grown up means you're doing your job and especially coming from Indian background, when the parents are there, you have this feeling, especially about the social norms. Should I take care of this, uh, this uh, ritual or that ritual? They always thinking about you, right? So we have this, um, um, uh, it's not just safety, it's not, uh, it's more than a love. It is a, a new flavor of love, which has a sense of belonging, right? See, uh, now to put that experience, having parents around to be in the house um, in words is getting a little tricky. You know, I have to use too many words to explain how does it feel when your parents are around. It feels like belonging. It feels like uh, a sense of love. It feels like somebody's taking care of you. It feels that you're carefree. You are at ease. Your mind is free. Your mind is open to explore whatever you're focusing on. Your mind is not too cluttered about too many things to think about or sort about, right? So, so that, that is where I want to lean more towards uh, the, this attribute of um, uh, words and what is behind a word, right? So if you actually ask this question, was there a word or was there a feeling before? What came first? Was there a feeling? Was there a presence before? Or was there a word before when whole of our culture as, as a culture we evolved, as any culture evolved, right? So the language came to represent something else. And that something else is this pure feeling, that pure love, that pure exchange and expression and all of that thing, right? To just facilitate what, the, what was there already present, we came up with this thing called language. Language came up with words, right? So now that I want to bring your attention to that part, but as we start going through this journey, we, we first thing when, when a child is born, what we try to do, we want to, uh, uh, to explain them what is, uh, uh, ask them to say like, oh, say mama, say ba, dada, right? Like you slowly start uh, feeding words to the children. <clears throat> So I'm not saying that words are totally bad, right? Words are good. Words helps us logistically to help us communicate faster, quicker, efficiently, right? And words help us to communicate not just uh, 
uh, uh, words, but it helps us to communicate the whole ideas. It is not just about communicating ideas. It is also embedded with the whole wisdom, right? So the whole ancestral wisdom that has been accumulated by generation after generation by, by our parents, our grandparents and whole of our culture, right? In order to pass that whole wisdom of the culture back to you, language works miracles. Right? And that is where they slowly start wanting to introduce words, introduce sentences, introduce concepts using the media of words. Right? And then as we start introducing that concepts, some part of our consciousness starts developing. And then we say it's that called intellect. Right? Intellect is an ability to associate things. And what are we trying to associate? We are trying to associate not only the concepts, Right? As a child, as you start growing, the way you learn is, is observing, listening, and associating. Observing, listening, associating, and engaging in the process. That's how you start learning, 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 right? And that's how your intellect starts broadening up, right? So it is not only helping you to consume the wisdom, uh, uh, it's not just a survival wisdom of how as a as a humans, we exist on this earth, but it also about uh, um, experiencing the wide range of emotions too, in a way, right? They even say that if your vocabulary is broad, your perceptive perception can also be broader because you can see the nuances of the, of the different variations of say love. Right? And in Hindi, there is a lot of words for one word love. We say prem, we say mohabat, we say um, uh, uh, apnapan, and there is a lot of words connected to them. Right? So, and each word has a different notion connected to that. Uh, one version of love is the love for God. Right? And, and even love for God has two, two different variations to it. One, one version of love is love out of respect, right? One version of love is out of devotion. And one version of love is totally different. It is totally spiritual love, right? And Ruhani Pya. So it is totally different version of love. And then there is another version of love, like uh, infatuation is a version of love. And uh, um, uh, uh, love which, which is dependent, affection is another version of love. Right? So as you start going deeper into words and try to understand, when we use the word understand, we are not just repeating the words as it is, right? but we are also going behind the feel, the feeling behind that word. And then we are saying, okay, oh, this is how it feels. Or this feeling is not same as this feeling, right? Okay. So now having said that, coming back to our topic of humility and ego, right? <clears throat> where does the, what what is an ego right and ego is um, is very subtle it is not just about what you have and uh, what you are identifying with with your profession with your uh, positions and with your relationships in the community your social status and uh, and all those kinds of stuff right but it is more than that if you actually see other day we were uh, discussing it. Uh, I just came back from our headquarters, Madhuban, in our Madhuban. I was try actually trying to, when we go to Madhuban, this is what I try to look forward for. I want to taste that spiritual love, that spiritual experience, right? And uh, that is what I was exploring there when I was there. Uh, when I go for meditation there, I want to tune into that aspect, that version. When I say I want to tune into, I'm not intellectualizing things. I want to feel things, especially when we use the words like vibrations and the spirituality, they're all subtle, right? So when you go there, I was trying to explore that. I want to go back to that experience, which is not so obvious, right? So um, I'll share some thoughts on how to get there. But before that, uh, if you look at the version of uh, ego, Abhiman, right? 
abhiman always associated with it has a uh, uh, you know there are two sides of a coin and you cannot have one sided coin no matter what you do you cannot have a one sided coin right unless you make it into a sphere right take a flat coin if you have a flat coin you cannot go you cannot have a one sided coin so if you want to make a coin one sided what you have to do is you have to totally melt it out and you have to totally melt it out and then you have to make it into a sphere where there is no other side for it other side is also your side so it becomes totally one sphere right when you become one sphere not to make a flat flatted version into a sphere you have to totally melt it out and make it into a tiny ball right so then once you make it a sphere so then what will happen there are two versions again what is inside what is outside right once you have a ball what is inside what is outside right and now what you have to do is you have to shrink that radius between uh, outer layer and the center of that thing you have to keep shrinking it all together when you totally make it into zero that is when there are no two sides there is no inside or outside there is no left side or right side right so you have to when you go beyond all of that so this is one analogy that resonates with me especially when you are talking about how to go beyond ego and this is how i have to i have to go beyond my ego so so when i'm talking about there are always two sides right so when you see an ego version of it one side of it you understand like the expression part of it right and the other side is your presence right expression part includes your position uh, position your possessions your uh, role that you play in the society in your family in your community right and that is all part of the expression there is nothing wrong about it right so if i identify myself totally with that expression part of it right it creates a whole sense of self who i am right how do you present yourself right so when you go out at your workplace so you have to put on that persona because you have to fulfill that role that responsibility if you put on this responsibility as a mother so you have to fulfill certain roles and responsibility there is a place for it and you cannot avoid that right so unless you put yourself in the shoes of a mother uh you you will you, you will not have the clarity of what should i should what should i do what should i not do how should i express how should i not express right but if i identify myself only with that role or responsibility or uh to to recognize my own skill i need to be aware of my own skills right i aware of my own capabilities right capabilities with respect to expression part right so in that sense you cannot say that see ego is connected to your uh, 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 position or your skill set you, you can't just walk away from that or you cannot deny yourself out of that thing right so where i'm going with this thing is there is a place for all of these things but when we spend all of our time and our presence in that external expression part of it it creates a whole sense of self when i'm using this word what is it what is it made up of what is this sense of self made up of this sense of self is made up of the other side of the coin what is happening behind the scene right what is happening behind the scene is how you feel about yourself right what part of you is alive when i say what part of you which is alive is uh, there is a experience part of it there is an awareness part of it uh, uh feel free to put any questions or comments in the chat box so if it is getting a little confusing so the part which i want you to focus on is an experience part of it experience is something comes triggers it something changes and then you feel that right and then there is a presence part which is not triggered which is as it is right so as we start going through this journey as we start consuming new ideas new experiences 
we start creating a whole new identity of yourself. And then there is nothing wrong about it. It is, it, this is the way we transfer our wisdom to next generation, right? And, and that is a good part. And that is a part which is connected to our survival, our existence on this earth. But that part, if that part takes over, your sense of self is totally lost. You follow, right? So your original sense of self, when you're just born, if you look at a child, they are so spontaneous. There's, there's so much in the presence. They're so much present, so much alive, so much uh, 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 in touch with what, in touch with themselves and in touch with everything else happening around themselves. And that ability gives them a lot of spiritual power, a lot of beautiful experiences, right? Spiritual power in a sense, uh, when we use all of these virtues like uh, forgiveness and uh, uh, letting go, right? How, how do you forgive somebody? The forgiveness is uh, uh, when you're not even aware of it, when you're not aware of what you did to me, right? There may be something happened be between you and me, uh, a uh, few minutes ago or uh, last day or, or last month, right? It might have really hurt me, right? So the real forgiveness is when I'm not even aware of that existence, not even aware of that experience. Can you digest that statement? <laughs> when you're not even aware of how did it feel, what happened last time? between you and me and just imagine how does how will be my interaction with you will be like right and you'll see that in children children fight they fight to such an extent that uh, they beat themselves each other <laughs> for parents they know that right but and then you can see the same kids who are fighting they are totally playing as if nothing happened between them. Yes or no? Right? Where did that power came from? Isn't that what we teach in spirituality? Forgive, forget, don't hold on to it. People change, things change, awareness changes. Every moment is a new moment. It is not the same thing. All of these concepts, 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 concepts. But is it really working? Is the question, right? So, so, but if you look at the children, is it working? Yeah, it is very well working. You can see that in action. You can see them playing together. Nothing ever happened between them, right? So that is where ego comes and that is where presence comes, right? Humility is an expression part of your presence. Humility itself is not presence. You follow, right? Humility is how your presence is presented, right? How, how, how is your outlook when you are in touch with the core of your presence? That expression is humility, but humility itself is not the solution. Follow, right? Humility is not the solution to go beyond ego. Humility is an expression. The solution to go beyond ego uh, I mean, uh, ego is going into your true spiritual presence. And why do you want to go beyond ego? Right? And that is a valid question because you can see that it starts hurting you. Yeah. So as we start uh, going through this journey, so this is where we start uh, experiencing the, the journey of spirituality, right? This is where spirituality comes into picture. And if you actually see behind every virtue, all other virtues are associated. If you are in touch with your presence, if you go beyond ego, um, everything falls into place. Give me one minute, I just have to close some door. <laughs>
Yeah, so so <clears throat> so here is where uh, uh, the meditation comes into picture. I just want to give a pause and then uh, allow everyone to think about it and then uh, 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 go deeper into this uh, idea. Ego, humility, and presence. Right? Let's meditate on that. So try to go deeper into this idea. What is the negative effects of ego? What actually is an ego? How to go beyond ego? So if you have a pen and paper, that will be ideal. Try to write down responses for these three questions based on what we discussed so far. What is an ego? What are the negative effects of an ego? What are the positive effects of an ego, right? And how to go beyond the negative effects of an ego? <clears throat> so if anyone is ready if anyone wants to share feel free to unmute yourself and uh, give your two cents Balraj Jagjit anyone wants to share What I was focusing more on humility, you know, so what I got out of it, it is your expression of presence for humility. Mm. And that's when uh, you use the word nirman or in, I think they say nimarta also, right? Mm. Nimarta is the same thing too. Mm. So humility is the solution is to go beyond ego. All I was focusing more on getting more out of humility. Very true. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amy was telling ego is when you are stubborn. After someone tries to <laughs> right? Beautiful. Okay. So anyone else, what are the negative effects of ego? For, okay. In my opinion, ego is self-importance or I am important than anybody else. Uh, being very body conscious and you want everything more than other people. So they are, they are kind of that is uh, that is how the ego looks and these are the negative effects as well because then you are very selfish in the sense that you focus only on yourself then you could be more uh, like negative effectively you will be angry if you don't get what you want if, then you will feel jealous of others if they get something which you want so there are a lot of negative effects of ego and humility mm. is opposite that which is self-realization according to me in the reference of context in spirituality. Very good. Humility is not just uh, being very humble or putting yourself down. It is more like self-realization and uh, because of that you will be more uh, like looking at others also equally and uh, you won't get um, what would you say? You will not uh, have that power struggle. 
Very good. Very good. Yeah. So if you actually see, ego is a root for a lot of vices. There is anger. There is jealousy. There is uh, that. Then may I mean jealousy is a, another version of hate and uh, anger. All of that thing is connected. Like I, I like what Amy said. Right. Ego is something that makes you stubborn. Even if somebody is apologizing, you're not ready to accept it, right? And if you actually see the version behind, Amy, you want to add something to that? Hold on. Um, yeah, like when you are too stubborn to forgive someone after they apologize, even though you feel inside that you should, but you just don't. <laughs> it's hard to explain. I'm shy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Because if you actually see that is a reality, right? So somebody has hurted us. If you actually see, now this is where I want you to try to go beyond words, right? Somebody came and apologized. What is it? It is a bunch of words, right? So why is it? Maybe their intention behind apolog apologizing is good, right? But even then we are not able to accept that apology. Why? So what is the forces which is working behind the scene? And this is where I want you to, uh, I want your, to bring your attention to going beyond words, right? So what happened when you got hurt? So there is a pain. It is not a physical pain, right? They, there is a saying, I mean, we, we do realize that it, the physical pain, for example, you tripped, you fell on your nose, your nose started bleeding, and then you are in the cast for a couple of months. That pain is nothing compared to somebody saying something mean, especially somebody who is very close to you, right? And that pain, mental pain, <coughs> mental pain, that goes long ways, right? So now you go beyond the words, you go beyond the expressions and then see what is that which is actually happening behind the scene. It is the emotional and mental pain. Right, and effect of that is what we are trying to hold, right? So more I start holding on to that thing, so what happens is more I will get stuck, right? And now somebody comes and apologizes, right? So they change their mind, uh, they are very nice, they are very kind, and then they they are showing all kinds of uh, um, um, uh, known uh, labeled expression of love. For example, a box of chocolate with a red rose and then delivered in a very fancy way. All of these labels associated to labels associated to the version of love, right? They are showing all signs of love. Follow, right? And this is where is the trap. So the key here is: have you ever had this uh, uh, realization that you get into a relationship? It, it need not be a, a romantic relationship. Relationship is you, as long as you're relating, you as a being relating to any other being, two beings relating to each other, you and your boss relating to each other. It's a relationship, right? Don't, mean, uh, I mean, one of the way to look relationship with a broader sense is it is more than wife and husband relationship. It is a little broader, right? Any relationship, you relating to any human being is a relationship. You relating to even to your dog or a pet is also a relationship, right? Between a, two conscious beings, there is something that flows between them, right? And let's not put any words. We may use words like label, labels like love and all that kinds of stuff. And let's not put any label now, right? And there is something that flows between these two beings, right? And that is what bonds you with other being. Okay, so now there are two things happening within our consciousness, especially the words that uh, Sister Zita bringing up is there is something called body consciousness and then there is something called your original consciousness, you as a being when you're born, right? So there are two parts to it. So as we start going through this journey of life and death, and as we go through this journey, what we start doing is we start acquiring a lot of wisdom, all right? And when we say acquiring, we start acquiring a definition of love itself. 
which is defined generations together and then that very version of law keeps changing and that version of law is connected to the fashion version of law is connected to the expression so the majority of it is the expression and the real law is intertwined totally stuck together and we start living in that part of our consciousness which is a limited version of law when we get stuck in a limited version of law what will happen is we start creating our own feelings based on that we start limiting ourselves to that uh, that experiences of it right so so then what will happen is why do we get a temptation you know when we use the word temptation what is a temptation we start looking at the signs you start keep switching the relationships why do you keep switching the relationships because there is an acquired wisdom of what a law means between two people law means somebody who keeps telling you 15 times i love you i love you i love you or some version of uh, law is like oh they are always uh, uh, are taking care of you right and it is not actually law it is dependency right or uh, dependency is not law if you are dependent it is an obligation if somebody is fulfilling a dependency they are full they are coming from a place of obligation right obligation is not same as love right so you don't want to so how does it feel when 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 you feel that you are dependent on somebody else that takes away your freedom that takes away your freedom of self right and if somebody comes and says you like you who you are is because of me right so then how do you how do you feel right if you actually see we need to take away all that versions of love right so we have created so many mixed versions of love dependency attachment infatuation um uh essential experiences right and all of this wide range of vers- versions of love it, it includes even even the devotional version of love right religious version of love all kinds of mixed versions of love is is messed up the real thing what we call love itself right so so as long as i don't go beyond this limited versions of love and my experience of my existence i am not going to go beyond ego the only way to go beyond ego is to i should start experiencing something real something which is not acquired right so once i start experiencing that real thing and again <laughs> we may end up using words <laughs> to take you beyond words right and uh, that that is uh, that is one definition of uh, spirituality i really liked is uh spirituality is that which takes you that that which takes you beyond words right so and and how for, and that is where we use the word like uh, soul consciousness right and uh, if you actually see uh, for those of you who have been coming to to these sessions uh, for a long period of time um there is a uh, in brahma kumaris there is something called uh, murlis every day first thing in the morning we read murlis and these are the versions of gods version of god and god is somebody who is beyond all of these things who is beyond all of this limited versions of experiences who's, who stays beyond all of this physical realm altogether right and the version of love coming from the other side of the physical and that being who tries to use some medium to to explain that version of love and to take you beyond this physical limited version of love is what murli says all about murli is the versions of god those versions which will help you those words which will help you take you beyond this physical so the words that help you to go beyond words <laughs> go into silence is what spirituality is all about right and that is why silence is the tool silence is the tool that will help you to go beyond ego right 
and again i'm not talking much about humility because humility is a side effect it is a result of going beyond ego right as you go beyond ego what happens is you start there is a street vendor passing by <laughs> this is india <laughs> question <laughs> so feel at home for those who come from india you can get the taste of india <laughs> Yes, yes. Do you live, do you live in old city? Do you no, live in I'm old in, city? No, no, I am in uh, in Usmania campus near that. It, it's it's oh, not okay. Vidyanagar. Yeah. Near Vidyanagar. Vidyanagar, yes. yes. Yeah. So, brother Harsha, can I say a word? Yes, yes. Um, as I was thinking about the word, the the e concept of ego, and I'm, I think. Ego must be a dynamic phenomenon, and what do I what do I mean by that? Um, my ego, I may be a humble person, but when I confront another individual who has a big ego, he wants to put put me down, Wait, and my ego, my ego erupts, and so ego and tolerance can work together. If that guy is egotistical, but I'm tolerant, things can work. If my ego erupts. then there can be a big conflict both mentally and possibly physically that that is true that is another tool another tool tolerance is another tool to not to get trapped in ego definitely right like that there are uh, all these eight powers that we learn in uh, rajyoga meditation introversion right the first uh, power that we say is step inward right so introversion helps you to go beyond ego ego is what uh, which is on the surface the experiences that comes from from the limited version of it is the ego introversion is you go beyond that right so introversion is going into silence more you go into the silence what is silence your silence in silencing what your silencing the triggers that is coming from outside your silencing the triggers that is coming from inside you know somebody said something and then they walked away they are not there external sound is not there but the internal noise is there they said something and then walked away like a person with ego is uh, uh, with lot of ego massive ego he said something strong and then he just walked away externally there is no sound now now that triggered a lot of noise inside our head this lot of layering thoughts inside our head that noise i have to go beyond that noise right and now sometimes it is you you may not even aware that what triggered your emotions right uh, somebody passed by and you are not even aware it sounded pleasant but something stirred up in your emotions right and there is lot of chaos in your emotions right you feel low you feel upset you for no good reason and then and then and then people might even say that like why are you upset or what, what is it that is bothering you and you cannot put a finger on what actually bothered me but you can see that you are upset <laughs> you follow right is that is, is that your no... ego is that your ego disturbing you that, that that is right but in other words where i'm going towards is that trigger can come from anywhere right but the whole of my presence right when i when i say my presence there are four layers to our presence our physical presence how you are feeling physically your five senses which is telling giving you a feedback of who you are how you feel second thing is your mind your mind is telling that uh, that somebody said something and it does not sit sit well with your mind and it try to sort it out and then that is where it goes into a spin how dare he says this to me what does he think about himself and all kinds of things like did i do something wrong or should i be thinking like this should i not be thinking like this what's going on why am i thinking like your mind will start going into racing right so that is the second thing and then the third version of your presence right is your emotions right your presence is physical presence mental presence emotional presence and as you use the power of silence which is actually the power of presence after you go beyond your physical mental and emotional then that's when you start coming into your 
spiritual presence right when once you come into your spiritual presence your heart the one which is actually feeling feels your presence your heart is not under the influence of the external influence your heart is under the influence of your internal presence internal presence is not emptiness internal presence is definitely empty of your waste thoughts or negative thoughts or negative feelings or negative emotions but it is full of positive presence original presence right we use the word adi and anadi swaroop original presence like a child like presence right when your heart is under the influence of your child like energy which is untampered and your head naturally follows your heart in other words your thoughts try to comprehend it feels good and then if you if somebody said something mean and then walked away your head is under spin and if your heart is under the influence of your inner presence pure presence your how you feel inside gives you strength to sort out what's going on in your head and then in your thinking will start readjusting by itself it says like it's okay he he's always like that it's nothing about me right it is nothing personal right and that is the sense of understanding that comes to your mind because mind has an influence either coming from outside or coming from inside inside is the your mind is sandwiched between external and your heart right if your heart is also under the influence of the external if your heart is stirred up and your mind is racing right and of course your body chemistry goes out of that right and your expression your tone what you're telling how you're handling the situation whole of that thing is 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 under spin right so what we try to say is like when we use all of this power one of the main power is the power of silence right as long as we are under the influence of all of this external that is ego right so when i how do i navigate from this this state of mind to my true presence of my my true inner present is i have to learn so there is an observer within myself right i have to observe what is going on in my physical right am i really my heart is pumping faster so focus on your breath take a deep breath calm down your heart calm down your senses right first thing calm down your tone right if it is really agitating that atmosphere just take a minute take a Uh, a respectable pause right you don't just uh, harshly walk away because it will stir up the thing right so you say like i, I need i need a moment uh, let me give me a moment i just want to get a water just try to walk away from that atmosphere so that that is a first thing that we can do physically taking a pause right and then calm down take a breath go for a walk and then tune into the nature nature is external too right tune into the nature tune into the uh trees go go for a walk in the park feel look at the dogs happy dogs right running around carefree right try to bring the attention to this nature and the nature will calm down your senses and then the second thing that is is your mind right and then just as you start observing your mind right if you don't observe your mind your mind will is directly hardwired to your emotions if you don't observe your mind you don't take reins of the train of thoughts that is going racing through your head you got to take control of the steering of the train the train which is train of thoughts which is going in a in a direction which you don't want to go to first of all you need to know where it is going and that is where observation comes into picture you step back and then you observe what am i thinking where are all these thoughts coming from and then try to and this is where another handy tool that comes uh, uh handy is journaling just take pen and paper and then just keep writing down whatever is going on in your head don't try to analyze just keep writing down one after other one after other and then you'll see the train you can see the whole train one box after another what is the engine that is driving whole of this train of thoughts and then you can write down you just don't have to analyze you just keep dumping whatever is going on in your head into pen and paper as you start dumping the stuff into pen and paper you can see the train what is triggering what what is triggering what and then you'll see the core what is bothering you what is the engine which is driving whole of this negative thoughts 
train of thoughts, right? Once you can, you can see that they said something mean towards me, right? In other words, they are questioning your sense of self, right? For example, if they say that, oh, she's stupid. She does not know how to do this thing, right? And then they just walked away, right? And then your mind starts going spinning. What are they saying, right? I am an engineer. I am qualified. I'm from Harvard University. I'm the top grader. How dare you say that to me, right? And then your mind goes into spin. In other words, if you see the root of it, they're questioning. They're questioning your very capability that you have taken for granted, right? When you, it's not only taken for granted, you're identifying yourself with it. So then you cannot not take it personal. Follow, right? And that is where you get to know that, uh-oh, so this is the root of it. They're questioning my skill, right? And then they are disturbing my uh, sense of self altogether there, right? And that is where you get stirred up. <laughs> that is where is your button, the push your button. A lot of people know, there are a lot of smart people, they know like how to, uh, <laughs> in this competitive world, they know how to push the buttons of the people, <laughs> right? So they know what do, what, should what do what to say to take her out of control <laughs> right so you need to know about your own buttons before others know about your buttons right <laughs> this is a way to go out of bring back the control of your own mind of your own emotions right again how do you start this journey so the the journey is like observing take every situation that makes you upset as an opportunity. It is a, it is a very valid test case to, to, to test it out, to take, take it for your benefit saying that, oh, this is what's happening. Let me step back, let me observe. Let me get the whole train of thoughts into a pen and paper. Once it comes into pen and paper, it is very clear, black and white. It is not a slippery thing, right? If you start working only on your head, only in your thinking, your mind will play tricks on you. I tell you, your mind will play tricks on you because you are working with your own self, with something subtle, something slippery, right? Ego is very tricky. It will play tricks on you like anything. So you got to be very careful while handling ego, especially, and this is one of one after other. So you see the pick up a situation, something that upsets you and then try to step back and observe what is going on, right? And then try to write down everything that is spinning in your head, right? And then you'll go back to that root button where it's like, oh, this is my button, I have to save it. <laughs> Don't give the control to this button, right? Put a guard, safety guard around that button. For example, if somebody says that you're not a good cook and you're a mom, you're cooking for them for decades together since they are born, and they come and say like, what kind of food do you cook, right? And then it hurts you, offshore, because you have invested in that. It is not happened just like that randomly because you have invested in that emotion, in that experience that I'm a mom, I'm going to feed a healthy food, fresh food, and then out of love, you're cooking and then you're putting that in an expression again and again, again and again, again and again for days together, years together, meals, how many millions of meals you have invested in that experience of it, right? It is so deeply rooted, right? But it is not easy to take away from it, right? And there is nothing wrong on what you have done, but all of your emotion, all of your uh, 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 emotional energy is invested in that one particular expression of it. Right? And then whole of that experience has created one button. I am a mom, I'm a good mom, I'm a good cook, right? If anyone says anything against that, my decades of millions of meals I have cooked out of love is under question, right? So now that is becomes a huge button. It's very sensitive, very subtle. Anyone come close to that, you start getting defending it very badly, right? I'm just giving one of the examples. It could be your skill, it could be anything. And that, when it becomes very sensitive, that is ego, that is ego. And anyone comes and then ruptures that thing, it hurts badly. 
and that is why it is not easy to forgive somebody who hurts that right so somebody might have said something and they might not even said about you they might they were talking to somebody else on the phone over their uh, wireless phone and then you might not have here saw that they are having something in their ear they thought that you might have thought that they are talking to you and then you have taken it personally and you might have got hurt and then they just walked away and then you may be thinking how dare he he said something mean and he just walks away like that <laughs> right and then things do happen how many of how many times you have found yourself it is not about you it is about something else and somebody else or it's about themselves how how often you found that to be true but the hurt that has created is real follow right even after you realizing that it, that person didn't say anything about you they are talking to somebody else but the hurt what you have experienced cannot change follow right and then the same hurt is associated back to them so now whose problem is that that is ego that is ego and that is where we have to lean towards finding our own solution because we are hurting ourselves by sitting more towards uh, on this side of the coin we are hurting ourselves so we have to go beyond all of this thing and the way to go beyond all of this thing is whatever we did to create this massive ego right this uh, very sensitive part within us i have to recreate that from experiencing the real thing the real thing will never change real thing is not sensitive it is eternal and that is where when we see children children are very much in tune with their eternal self they don't have any labels associated yet to them right you 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 can't say that you keep smiling and then tell to them that oh you are the meanest boy i ever had and then have a big white smile the child will smile back at you why they have no association to the word mean to themselves they respond to your smile they respond to the energy that you are putting out right and they are very much in tune with their presence when they sleep you see how pleasant they sleep you look at the expression on the face of a child when they're sleeping that's so divine so angelic right and when when you when they're awake when you make an eye contact when you smile at them when they smile back at you that expression of joy is so pure and it's so uplifting for the other person who is connecting to that child that smile that joy of the child right it is very uplifting for ourselves because the one who is in tune with the original sense of love always triggers that in others no matter what and there is no association connected they are not saying they they, they don't uh, express differently for different people they have the same pure genuine smile whoever they come across and it is sustainable there is no ego building up out of that they're naturally pleasant inside they're not uh, sacrificing anything within themselves to make other person feel pleasant they are just being themselves they're happy by default they're making anyone who is in touch with them happy and that is true spirituality right as you go into that presence you become very naturally humble right so now as a grown up right so we already know what is going on right so when i can keep my head my mind and my heart the one who is feeling one who is creating thoughts both under the influence of that pure original self within me when i keep these two head and heart under the influence of my pure presence right and of course all that understanding that has been acquired as we go through this journey as we have acquired from the media as we acquired from the different people different wisdom we are more wiser now use the wisdom the worldly wisdom to put things into perspective when somebody says something mean you can understand that there is some pain behind their meanness or there is some ask behind that meanness right 
So, <laughs> so just imagine that people don't know how to ask what they want, right? So what do people want? There is nobody on earth who doesn't, who, who, who says that I don't want love. I don't want happiness. I don't want peace of mind. Everyone wants love. Everyone likes to be respected. Everyone likes to be loved. Everyone likes to be recognized. Everyone likes to be accepted as they are, right? And all, all these things is different version of love and happiness and joy. Everyone is looking for that in one way or the other. But when they're trying to put it out or ask for that thing, they don't know how to ask for that thing. Even we don't know how to ask for that thing, right? And that is why we start demanding love, right? And our version of demanding love is we start telling the people who are very close to you is like, look, you don't love me anymore, right? Maybe you might have spent together, married together for decades together. You don't love me the same way as you used to love me before, right? And then you say like, hmm, where is this coming from? <laughs> what happened now? And then, and then you start going digging deeper into it. And then, you, and then you'll come to, a, and then you start hearing things like, like, look, we used to go out for dinners, we used to go out for walks and all these kinds of stuff. So in other words, where are they looking for love? They're looking for love in the walks. They're looking for love in the dinners. They're looking for love in the rose, roses, right? And then they're looking for love in the expression. Okay, so you might be mature enough. You say like, hey, this is all childish. Let's go, let go. And then you say that, and then the subtle version of the same ego is like when they start saying that, hey, look, you don't love me anymore, right? And, and, and you say like, what happened now? You don't listen to me anymore. You're not listening to me, right? And then the other person will say like, yeah, I am listening to you. You said this, that, and the other. Isn't this not what you said? He said, like, yeah, I said that, but you're not listening to me. You follow, right? He said, like, what else am I supposed to listen? <laughs> right? And then, the, and then the sisters here, they can, they can relate to that much more, right? He said, like, look, you are not listening to me. You're not getting what I'm trying to get, right? And sometimes uh, men may think, that, oh, okay, when she says no, which means right, yes. Sometimes when she <laughs> speaks, which means no. Like, I'm confused now, like, should I say yes or no, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, what is the ask there? They are asking me to listen to how am I feeling and respond to my feeling. Don't just get caught up in the words. I may say the words just because it is socially right thing to say, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? Yeah. That is the problem. That is an ego, right? Ego is we start looking for that thing in a subtler way, right? You're not listening to me means you don't know how I am feeling inside. Are you listening to my feeling? Can you sense my feeling, right? And then you say, like, okay, that is real love. Can you sense how I feel? Can you make me feel better, right? But if the other person is stuck in an ego, if you want to make that other person who's stuck in an ego to feel better, give all the treats, right? If you keep giving those treats, and then they'll say like, yeah, now you love me more, right? But in fact, it's not the real ego. You are looking for the tokens, right? Candlelight dinner, going out for walks or whatever it is, right? And then you just keep listening and then you know what is the right thing to say, right? You're the smart guy. So you know what, what to say, when to say what, <laughs> right? right saying the right thing at the right time and all of the stuff but the reality is is that really what you want is that what really fulfills your heart that is not the thing that really fulfills your heart the, in, a, in a subtle way it is feeding your ego right and it will keeping you stuck in the ego keeping stuck in the ego does not allow you to experience the real love you're missing out on the real joy the child experiences, the real love the child experiences from a mom, from anyone who interacts with. The, the joy that comes out of experiencing the real thing, connecting to the real thing, being in that presence, right? When the, when the child is playing with the toy, he's not even remembering his mom, <laughs> right? 
he's totally in the presence, so much engaged, so much joy, so much expression. And that is beautiful. And if you actually see what is the point of our living, that is the point of our living. That is what we want to experience here. That real joy is what we want to experience, right? <clears throat> so more I start walking away from ego, more I start tuning into the real version of love, real version of my presence, real version of me, who I really am as this being, right? And coming from that space and expression that comes from that space is so beautiful. Follow, right? So more you start going through this journey, more pleasant it, will, it, starts, it, it starts taking you closer to it, right? Uh, you talked about the buttons, your buttons and somebody else's buttons. Um, is it humanly possible for adults who acquired these buttons to shun those buttons away? I guess those buttons are part of our ego. How, That's right. how easy or difficult is to get to the childlike state? That, that, that is right. <clears throat> that is what whole spirituality is all about. The whole spirituality is about that, right? So if you actually say, and this is not a new question. This is whatever I'm saying is not new that nobody else has figured it out. So a lot of saints have worked on this thing. Not just saints, a lot of emperors, a lot of kings, especially coming from India. If you look, if you look like whole Jain religion has started from Mahavir Jain and he himself is an emperor of India. He was a huge uh, success. If you actually see in terms of uh, worldly labels, he was very successful. He brought a lot of innovation. He, he, uh, he patronized the art and culture and bring the beauty of joy into the human community altogether. And he himself went deeper. He said like, hey, there is to be more to our existence, right? And that is when he went deeper into all of this thing. Look at Buddha. Buddha is also saying he had all the riches, all the things that anyone can ever expect. And he was the prospective emperor of Bharat, whole India. And India was a lot small community, uh, small uh, uh, kings, small kings together, but uh, kingdoms together. But he, as a most powerful king, he had a prospect of becoming a whole em em emperor of the whole empire of Indian community. And it was rich and prosperous. Right. So if you look at that, all of these people have already tasted this and they say, like, I want to taste something deeper. Right. And this is a very age old question. And this question has been pondered how to go beyond ego. If you look at a lot of saints, they say that everything else is easy, easy to go beyond lust, easy to go beyond greed, easy to go beyond all other stuff. But it is the hardest thing to go beyond is the ego because it builds the whole false sense of yourself, right? Even if you're a spiritual leader, right? It creates the whole subtle image of yourself that look, I am the one who's better. <laughs> and there is, everything is validating against that, right? I am spiritually better. I help so many people. I help the community. And then you can't deny that too. And then you helped in a very uh, righteous way. You uplifted the community, but still that sense of self is connected to your action and interaction. It is not your eternal presence. And that is the ego. And then even the, the very powerful saints say that this is the biggest problem. This is the final problem that you have to cross over. Ego is the final um, threshold that you have to cross over as a spiritual being, follow, right? So anyhow, so why I'm bringing this thing up is this is not new. And a lot of people have tried to get over ego, right? So, so now comes to the question, like how do I get over that? So here is how I approach, right? In my own humble way of thinking, <laughs> <clears throat> I won't identify myself that, oh, I am, I'm, spiritually totally mature and all other these kinds of stuff, right? You only know only when you experience. If you, get, if, if you understand a concept, does not mean that 
you become that right so ego plays tricks on us like when uh, sister chandru always says that especially when you use the words like i know especially somebody is telling that oh you need to be this that and the other and it's like oh i know i know that don't tell me again i know that right so the minute when you say i know that you realize that you don't know if you really know then this situation won't even have existed follow right so and that is where she brings our attention back especially when you say i know realize that it is the ego that is tripping you it is taking you away from the solution right that is the first thing and then the second thing is what you are who you are dealing with in this journey is uh, so who you are dealing with in this journey is you are dealing with yourself you are dealing with your own uh, <clears throat> you are dealing with your own massive ego which has built or you, your own investment of your emotions you are emotionally invested in that idea of yourself or the concept of yourself right so as you start going into this your mind knows you are ha- who you are dealing with is you are dealing with yourself in one way or the other <clears throat> so who we are dealing with is uh, we are dealing with ourselves so the 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 problem is you have to be very honest you have to be very honest in this journey right if you try to play tricks on your mind your mind will have access to everything about you your mind will have access to your deepest fears your mind will have access to your deepest uh, uh, emotional trips it knows how to trip you and especially the ego which is on the peak of all other vices ego can trip your anger ego can trip your lust ego can trip your attachments ego can trip your phobias ego is under control of all of the weaknesses you ever have right don't try to challenge it <laughs> my humble request is don't try to challenge your ego try to work with it don't try to oppose your ego try to work with it try to understand and in this journey you have to be very honest right and this is where <clears throat> spirituality comes into picture the spirituality says that you have to be very loving you can't use anger or violence or sense of right and wrong against yourself this is a overloaded statement <laughs> try to digest this you cannot use anger violence or a sense of right and wrong against yourself especially when you step into your inner world you have to be very kind very respectful and very honest with yourself right and as you are doing this you have to be especially when i'm using this word honesty right so so the the three words that goes in this practice the essence of all of this journey of karma kumari is nimit nirman nirmal swabha so the, these three words are the words from dadi prakashman nimit nirman nirmal swabha the the nirmal means mal means dirt right nirmal means without dirt so there should not be any dirt when we use the, the what is the dirt what dirt are we talking about so the dirt of the heart is mixed emotions negative feelings right so i have to go beyond the impurity which is mixed in my own heart right nimit nirman nirmal swabha be as an observer right more you become an observer more you can handle what is going on if you, how to as you start observing you start getting detached from that which are absorbed in follow right it could be a triggered emotion it could be a 
ideology that you are identifying with and it is your whole sense of self you are absorbed into you will not know what you are absorbed into emotionally mentally and as a sense of self ego that you don't know what you are absorbed into the way to detach yourself from ego or emotional state of yourself or mental train of thoughts is to observe and that is why in meditations one of the powerful tool that we use is to observe the word is used is <clears throat> uh as a witness right sakshi be a witness not just pulling yourself out of yanking yourself out of that emotional state be a witness like as a side person who is uh, unbiased right put yourself in that shoes and then be a witness to your own state of your heart state of your mind train of thoughts that are going state of your heart, body right and how can you be uh, naturally step aside is love when i use the word love towards yourself is be kind towards yourself right kindness is you are not absorbed into it and at the same time you are not denying it right kindness is understanding right when you are looking for love and especially when you say that you are not listening to me i want somebody who I, who I can relate to somebody who can feel what i feel what are you looking for you are looking for somebody who can understand you right and that is kindness right and be kind to your own self in other words try to understand what is going on trying to understand itself is self love follow right so when i hold this kindness which means like be very genuine be very honest like what actually is bothering you right don't just get stuck in the superficial layers of course you get angry right don't just stop at recognizing that yes i am angry no i should not be angry that is violence you follow right the subtlety here is when you step back and then you observe that you are angry when you when you step back and you observe you are angry what actually is happening is and then you say that i should not be angry you are using some other energy to suppress that that force that you are using against yourself is violence follow right it's okay to be anger angry so the key here is just listen this is what's happening it's okay it's okay it's all right let it be and then only when you accept whatever is happening only then you can go past what is causing this anger follow right and then the noise will start coming up oh she said this he said this how dare she say this and all of that thing be a good listener don't try to analyze don't try to engage in the story don't try to feed more to that story of train of thoughts that is flooding in your head that is kindness towards your mind be a good listener be a good listener to your own mind right treat your mind like a child you know when a child gets uh, upset they start saying things which does not make sense and then you say like what are you trying to say right and then they keep saying this that and the other and then if you just keep quiet and then keep listening and then somewhere some sign will come up like oh you want this that is what you are saying all of this thing about okay here you go right <clears throat> most of the time it is not what they are asking for don't get stuck in the words in other words don't get stuck in your thoughts what is flooding in your head your train of thoughts is like some noise a child is trying to make to get your attention right so when you start listening to your own mind and your own heart your mind and heart will get the attention of you the real being real conscious being right give the attention that deserves that that is needed for your mind that is love love towards yourself and as you give attention to it all the noise will starts fading off and then the real thing starts coming up right what really is bothering where is this all this noise coming from 
right? And then as you start digging out, you, you feel a little lighter in your head. All this noise starts fading off and then there's this tranquility starts seeping into your mind, right? It is good sign, right? Same thing, the tranquility starts coming into your heart. That is also a good sign, right? And this is good, but at a subtle level, this is where your uh, mind can play tricks on you, right? As you start feeling good, you say that you attained it. No, that is not the goal. Your mind, your part of your ego is giving you what you want to hear. You follow, right? It is giving you a sense of peace to your mind, sense of uh, relief to your heart, but that is not the destination. The real problem is much more deeper. So your ego is giving you what you are asking for, right? And that's when you have to take that as an opportunity and to go a little deeper, right? Relief, a relief of uh, emotional pain is not actually love. It is just a relief. It is good. Relief is not actual peace. Relief leads to peace, but it is not the destination. When, it is, when you're relieved of it, you feel much more pleasant. That is not just the peace. Peace is a live energy, right? Peace is when you really get in touch with that real energy. Love is that real energy. Relief is a good sign that you're heading towards that. So in other words, where I'm, what I'm trying to say is focus on the destination. Don't try to stop the journey inward. Like as you make your mind calmer, as your heart becomes pleasant and relief, go further deeper. Go further deeper and feel the real thing. Right? As you go deeper, that is where the childlike presence starts coming alive. Right? It is not just a relief, it is a living energy. Peace is a living energy. Love is a living energy. Follow, right? So as you go deeper, you start tuning into that. And that pleasantness is what Buddha referred to as bliss. So you start experiencing the real bliss. It's beautiful. And bliss is beautiful. And then when you start experiencing the real bliss, and that is the joy. And that is when, that is what all the saints, all the, all the, like Jesus or Muhammad Prophet or, or any other saint, Guru Nanak or any of them, when they are trying to tell what they experience or, or Rumi when he puts in the version of love in his own poems, right? Or when they start ex expressing that, they are trying to share what they experience when they get into that state. It is so pleasant. It is so beautiful, right? And that is when you really know that you crossed over the threshold of ego. Once you get there, ego can never trip you down. And it's so beautiful. It's so pleasant, right? And once you are in that state, everything else is like unaffected. So, so, the, so your ego will not come in your way, right? And then that is what is humility. Humility is nirman, nirmal, right? There is no ego, there is no dirt, there is no limited sense of, there is no dirt of limited sense of self, which is tripping you down, which is limiting you down, which is limiting your true freedom of expression. The true freedom of expression is when you are very much in tune, your inner beauty, inner presence, the pure sense of loving presence. And that presence comes out in the, in the form of compassion and kindness, and that has a very profound effect on whoever gets in touch with that. Whoever interacts with you, they get touched to the core of their heart, core of their soul, right? And that is how if you see a lot of religious uh, founders like Jesus or anyone else can touch so many people can transform the whole community which was stuck in the limited anger, ego, vices and all of these trips, how could they uplift the community out of that? Because they get in touch with that core and they come from that true place of compassion, which touch each and every soul. 
once you feel the real thing it will take other person beyond their own ego once they experience the real thing they cannot deny ego cannot do anything about that follow right and once you experience the true beauty of connecting to this beautiful presence to this and then you can use the words like divine and all of this uh, sacred words that we use but only when you feel it then only you know it in order to feel it you got to go beyond this ego yeah so these are some of the thoughts uh, which i wanted to share um unless anyone have any thoughts questions comments i would like to have share a little commentary where we can go deeper into that state of mind does it sound okay this is elde yeah thank you uh brother harsha that was wonderful i can tell that uh your trip in india has deepened your well and uh also i loved how you your way to handle the noises the vendors the sweeping the dishes <laughs> just like as if children were playing and you're trying to do your work and you just remain cool so it was lovely actually to feel that we were there with you the taste of india <laughs> and also the taste of home i mean it's palpable mm. and um you really use that um you know to uh make the a reference because like you said concepts concepts let's get real man <laughs> 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 so thank you it's good to see you and we look forward to this meditation Sure. Thank you, everyone. So let's take a minute to get the taste of the real thing. Yeah. So wherever you are, make yourself very comfortable and make it very natural. Make it very natural. And gently bring your attention to your body. look around your room feel the ground beneath your feet wherever you're sitting and gently push your lower back a little forward and then you see that whole spine comes straight and your shoulders naturally rolling back your chest is opening up and as you bring alignment to your posture just observe your breath this life giving breath bring your mind bring your attention to your breath focus on your nostril just feel that feel that soothing oxygen that cool fresh air along your nostril flowing through your nostril feel every muscle relaxing on its way on the path of your breath filling your lungs transforming your body feed every muscle with this loving energy this breath is the gift of love from this mother nature open your heart accept this love of nature feel it with every breath a lungs full of love filling your heart with this loving oxygen feel your heart beat every heart beat this loving energy is radiating through your veins flowing through your shoulders your arms your elbows spread this loving energy to your legs 
whole of your body is soaking in this love. Feel it, accept it, absorb your body into it. It's not an idea, it's not a thought, it's not a concept, it is real, feel it. Each breath like a fountain of loving energy, fountain of pure love flowing into your mind, reaching top of your scalp, spreading all over your scalp, the soothing loving energy flowing into your brain, Feel. feel all the sensations in your brain, feel all the pulsations, slow down and just allow, you can feel the blood pulsing through your brain, let it flow, more you relax, more you allow this energy to flow, relax. Deeper and deeper. Feel that sense of relief. Feel that opening within your mind. Allow this loving experience to grow in your mind. Spreading all over your forehead. Feel that loving space behind your forehead. Allow this awareness to expand. This loving energy is all over you, all around you. Expand your mind. Take your mind beyond the physical. Take your mind into this loving silence, a loving space. This pure eternal love, the love of silence, from the noise, tune into that loving presence. Fill your mind with this loving stillness. Let this loving feeling seep into your heart. Allow your heart to nurture with this loving feelings, loving energy. Nurture your heart. Relax your heart. Allow this loving energy to fill your heart, opening your heart, letting go of emotions, tuning into this loving feelings, eternal love. Feel that sense of lightness, loving lightness. Allow yourself, allow your heart to get absorbed in this lightness. A sense of freedom from all heaviness and burden dropping off from your heart. Your heart is lifting off into this light. Love light and this beautiful connection to this eternal love. Let your heart tune into this spiritual presence, this lightness, this eternal presence. Your heart and mind totally absorbed in this loving light, feeling lighter and lighter feeling calmer and fresh with this pure energy. Go deeper into this loving silence, connected silence. Let your heart stay in tune with this eternal love. Experience the beauty, the joy, of a childlike innocence, freedom from the limited, from the ego. Tune into that love, 
that which is not conditioned, that which is eternal, that which is within you, that which is you. You are this eternal being of love. Tune into your pure presence. Listen to that pure presence. Feel. Acknowledge. And stay in your loving connection to yourself. Feel the beauty of being yourself, a loving self. And you're always loved, always will be loved. Tune into that eternal loving being. Take your heart beyond limited. Tune into that divine, eternal love. Stay absorbed in love. Like a child in the womb of a mother, stay absorbed in the loving heart of the divine. Stay absorbed in this eternal truth. Reinvigorate that connection to the divine. Stay absorbed. Oh, shant, shant, shant. Thank you everyone for your loving presence. As always, every Tuesday we have this gathering and we love to see you soon. Om Shanti.